the incursion into Rafa, the border crossing near Egypt from Gaza. Uh, the Israelis say they've now got operational control. Uh, let's go to my next guest. Uh, fantastic to have you on. Lieutenant General Ben Hodges, former commander of the US Army in Europe. Ben, good afternoon. Welcome to Drive. Hey, Jeremy. Um, thank you so much for being part of the show today. Can you just give your take uh, as an ex, uh, well, commander of the US Army? Um, in terms of this entire situation in the Middle East, um, I, I have sat and listened to the bleeding arts say to me, come on, let's have a ceasefire. What we're seeing in, you know, uh, Gaza is appalling. I accept that and I acknowledge that, as appalling as it was to see what happened on October the 7th. But militarily, you've got two absolute polar opposites who are not going to listen to the bleeding hearts say, let's have a ceasefire. Benjamin Netanyahu wants to eradicate the terrorist cell that is Hamas. Hamas, presumably, knew exactly what they were doing and now want a ceasefire and are keeping the hostages. Where do you, a military expert, see this ending, if at all, my friend? So, uh, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, I, my problem as if I were an Israeli commander, would be what, what is the political context of the operation? I mean, what, what's the desired outcome? I, I get destruction of Hamas. And every member of Hamas should burn in hell forever. The problem is just the use of force is not, is not going to lead to the destruction of Hamas. I don't think that's a feasible objective as desirable as it is. And so um, if I'm putting myself in the shoes of those soldiers, they're going to be involved in operations that are going to kill a lot of uh, Palestinians. There, there's no two ways around it. So there's a psychological aspect to this as well. In terms of, I mean, and, I mean, there is the point, and it's one of those issues that are so difficult to discuss because, um, you know, we all sat there on October the 7th and despite people saying these theories have been debunked, what happened uh, was absolute, well, to me it was genocide. People will say that's not the case. Other people will say, no, this is genocide now. You are seeing 30,000 people killed. You're seeing a humanitarian disaster on a scale that we haven't seen for years. But you know as well as I do that war is an appalling and horrible and abhorrent thing. But the fact of the matter is, is that is it militarily possible, I nearly got that out, to take out Hamas given that this organisation hides amongst its own people? We've talked about the tunnels. We've talked about where their operation control centres are in schools and in hospitals. Is, is Israel's, I get their desire, but is their implementation really impossible? Or can think, it be achieved? I think it cannot be achieved the way they're doing this. Uh, look, many of your listeners, British soldiers that served in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, would have been confronted daily with cases where Taliban or Al-Qaeda or other enemy personnel were hiding in mosques or hiding in uh, houses. And none of us would have used force just to blow up a house because we thought there was probably a Taliban inside of it. I'm not saying we never made a mistake, but that was never allowed to be done because it's against the law of armed conf land well, conflict. Well, so here's an interesting thing. So Yosin Kofino, Middle East correspondent, said to me earlier, when people talk about, and this is really interesting, Ben, because you are the military angle here. He said, and I quote earlier, the thing is, because of the power of the Israeli army, it's not genocide. They could have flattened Gaza in 30 minutes. He said they are actually trying to handpick Hamas. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to work. You're saying, militarily-wise, it won't work. What is the alternative? How would you have done it differently, my friend? I, well, uh, it's not just a military solution. I guess that's the point. Um, and I don't want to get thrown in your bleeding heart uh, box here, but there has to be a political context. If you're going to send your soldiers anywhere, if you're going to use military force anywhere, it has to be within a political context. And this war is about land. And so uh, as long as uh, the Netanyahu government refuses to accept any possibility of something where there is land for the Palestinians, this is going to go on forever. And, and I think um, is the government, the Israeli government, is also starting to, uh, they're losing some support from the United States, for example. I mean, you know, the president, I think, has already communicated that we may have to use the ultimate leverage of cutting off uh, ammunition or weapons to them 
if they continue to go down the path they're going. Very difficult for, uh, for, for, for um, by Joe Biden because the point of the matter is, and, and, and I sort of see this as a world thing as well, Ben. I, th I think the world rightly condemned and had to condemn the atrocities of October the 7th, but the humanitarian disaster that's unfolding is unedifying on, on, on many, many levels. My point is, what is the answer? I'm told by so many, there probably isn't an answer, so we'll have this standoff. But I, I also will argue with the people who say, and, and they get very angry, but oh, let's have a ceasefire. Listen, you can't have a ceasefire where two parties are so absolutely polar opposite in what they want. If one party says you need exterminating and the other party says we need to live amongst you, you you've got a major issue. And I think, you know, people can look at Netanyahu, who wouldn't be in power, by the way, in Israel if it wasn't for this war. People can look at Hamas, who released a statement, I'm just reading it somewhere else just now, saying, you know, them turning down the ceasefire is outrageous and against, you know, human rights. They didn't think about that when they did what they did on October the 7th. And I repeat, they've said they'll do it again. Yeah. Well, look, of course, you're you're right on this. And um, I think the solution is not going to be a purely military solution. It's mm -hmm. going to have to be something that involves other countries in the region. If you're trying to destroy an insurgency or a terrorist organization, you have to destroy the source of the where do they get their resources? What, why do they exist? What is it that causes them to exist? Do you Eventually, see this spreading? You talk about resources. We all know the impact of, of, of Iran. We've talked about the axis of power with Russia and China. We just talked about a hacking situation. Do you believe that the Middle East crisis as we see it right now has the potential, again from a military perspective, to spread further out across that region and, and take in other countries and thus drag other countries into this? I would look at it from a slightly different angle that what's happening there is connected to what's happening with Russia against Ukraine. Uh, China is watching all of this. If you can imagine a, if, if it's our objective to help Ukraine defeat Russia, defeat Russia back to the 1991 uh, borders there, then Iran no longer has their best ally, which is Russia. So Iran becomes isolated and then we can focus on this region and this would also serve to deter china so kind of a, a russia first just like great britain and the united states agreed on germany first back in world war ii if we all agreed on russia first iran is isolated and China is deterred. Well, I've said this about Russia, about the Ukraine war for a long, long time, because there's all sorts of things. There's phrases like war fatigue, and we've got a cost of living crisis. And I understand people when they hear that we're giving billions to that and, and other things militarily, they think, well, hold on a second, why? But the truth of the matter is, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but this is my opinion, the war that Ukraine are fighting against Russia is actually Europe's war because if, if Russia is successful in Ukraine and puts one foot outside Ukraine, then NATO, the United Nations, everybody, that we are then at war. So, as you say, to get rid of Putin, to to to, to if you like, chip away at that axis with, with axis with with China and Iran, making sure that Russia loses against Ukraine is paramount, isn't it? It's essential for all of us. If if Ukraine fails, it will be because the U.S. and U.K. and Germany and France allowed them to fail, and then we're going to end up with a much worse conflict. The, the Poles are not going to sit behind the Vistula River and watch the Russians keep coming. The Romanians have already said they will protect Moldova. So this will get out of hand. Uh, we'll be forced to have NATO soldiers involved in conflict with Russia if we don't defeat Russia inside Ukraine. Uh, ben, uh, so good to have you on. Lieutenant General Ben Hodges, uh, ex-commander, boss of the US Army in Europe on talk drive at quarter past five. God, it's a bit... Well, listen, this is news. That's what this is about. I'm not going to sit here and pretend this stuff isn't going on. We've talked about the tension in the Middle East between Israel and Palestine. The Palestinians, of course, a really interesting take there as well.